Hey ladies, are you feeling overwhelmed by hormonal changes? Well, you're definitely not alone. There are more than 1,000 hormone disruptors living in our environment right now. It's sending your food, your water, the air you breathe, the clothes you wear, your skincare products. They all mess with your hormones. Then there's the natural hormone changes your body goes through. Premenopause, menopause. And while it's a natural process, it doesn't mean you have to suffer through it. The good news is you don't have to suffer through it anymore because now you have hormone harmony, a formula made only with herbal ingredients that are shown to reduce hormonal symptoms in women of all ages. Hormone harmony is not just a hormone support and supplement. It's become a phenomenon. Women can't stop talking about it on social media. A bottle of hormone harmony is sold every 24 seconds. And the biggest benefit? Well, my wife says it makes her feel like her own self again. And that's what women mention over and over in the reviews. And there are over 30,000 reviews for Hormone Harmony. And for a limited time, you can get 15% off your entire first order at happymammoth.com. Just use code RLRC at checkout. That's happymammoth.com and use code RLRC for 15% off today. That's H-A-P-P-Y-M-A-M-M-O-T-H dot com and use code R-L-R-C. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have a right to an attorney prior to or during any question. If you can't afford one, the court will point one for you. You understand your rights. And the wolf is at your door. You're running so that's for sure. This episode of Real Life, Real Crime, the podcast may contain descriptions of acts of violence or that of a sexual nature and should be for people that are 18 years or older. Heed my warning, people. I do not get the facts of these cases off of the internet or for some television show. The facts I'm retelling you were presented to me by the victims of the crimes or the perpetrators who committed the crimes against the victims. My descriptions of the crime scenes are what I saw with my own two eyes. If you're going to get offended, please turn this podcast off now. Thank you. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Real Life, Real Crime, the podcast. As always, I'm your host, Woody Overton. Stay tuned at the end of today's show for Real Life, Real Crime announcements. Um, today, I'm going to be telling a story. It's very controversial, and it's been going on since May 15th of 2001. And I'm going to call it, Where is Wesley Dale Morgan? Okay? Now, as many of you know, I'm originally from East Feliciana Parish, or, um, considered Clinton, Louisiana, is the main seat of it. And... This story is is pretty controversial, all right? And I will tell you the facts of the story and what's been reported throughout the years, and then I will tell you my personal involvement from a law enforcement standpoint in this story. Um, I probably should have covered it a long time ago, but I, I don't see any new media since maybe 2019 on it and i'll tell you my personal beliefs as the story goes along okay and then i'm gonna do a call to action because i believe wesley dale morgan 
can be found. Okay, but I, I mean, we, we have such a massive platform now, and we're going to share everything on social media and try to do for West Adele Morgan what we did for Courtney Coco and Mary Pusho. And I believe that we can do it, y'all, but it needs your help. Now, this story begins on May 15th, 2001, in East Feliciana Parish, um, which the main seat or the biggest town, I guess you would say, is Clinton, Louisiana. And it's where I'm from. It's, it's a small town. To this day, it still doesn't have a red light. Um, it's, it's rural, you know, great people, very close-knit commu- community. And on Tuesday, May 15, 2001, is where we begin. So for those of you who aren't from Louisiana, in May here, it's hot. Okay, springtime pretty much doesn't exist um, in East Luciana Parish. It pretty much goes from cold mornings to just getting butt ass hot. Right, um, Tuesday, May fifteenth, two thousand one. West Liddell Morgan was a baby, y'all. He had just made two years old. So think about that—a toddler, basically. You now. You know, I had a two-year-old here, um, one of my friend's kids, one of the great lifer's kids here this weekend, a little girl, and I'm looking at her, and she's so tiny, right? And she could count to 12, but, you know, she's not running marathons or anything. She's not fully mentally developed or anything like that. She's a two-year-old. And, and I mean, when they say toddler, that's because they toddle back and forth when they walk, I mean, you could barely even walk and get around. Um, it's just a baby in my mind. All right. And that's what, how old Wesley was, Wesley Dale Morgan. And on this day, he lived with his mother, uh, whose name at the time was Ruby Habert. And she was living with Wesley Dale Morgan, her son. And, her boyfriend, Burl Hilton, okay? And they lived on Highway 63 in what we call the Bluff Creek area. Now, there's been a lot of misnomers about this case, a lot of things that are reported incorrectly, and one of them that the general public seems to think outside of East Louisiana Parish is that where they lived was like in the town of Clinton. It's not true. We call it... Like I said, Bluff Creek Road, it's probably eight or nine miles to this house from the town of Clinton, um, going up Highway 63. And if you're going from Clinton towards Bluff Creek, Ruby Havert and Wesley Dale and Morgan and Ruby's boyfriend, Burl Hilton lived in this little house on the left-hand side off of Highway 63. Now, at the time, there were no other neighbors around, and when you when you driving up 63, it's it's wood would have been woods on both sides of the highway, and that this this highway, y'all, it's another thing that's been falsely reported. They they people think it's like heavily traveled. It's not. I mean, they, they might have 200 cars that go up and down the, high, the entire day, especially back then. But as you drive up 63, you're in a wooded area, and then there's a driveway to the left, which goes down a hill a little bit at an angle, and there's a small home. Uh, I, I don't know how many bedrooms, y'all, but it's small. And on the, on the front of the home, as you look down this little driveway and hill, is a or was a wooden porch with some, some like a hand railing with some little wooden slats, okay? And on this day, uh, Ruby, Wesley Dale's mama, was home with Wesley Dale, and around 9 o'clock in the morning, 
she is outside on a porch with a two-year-old, and she said he was playing with four puppies, all right? And around 9.45 a.m., Ruby, who was 19 years old at the time, y'all, she went inside to boil some eggs to make, I guess, to make for lunch later on. And when she came back out, she left Wesleydale outside playing with the puppies. She said when she came back outside, she couldn't find him. And Wes, Wesley was playing with four puppies. And when she w- went inside to do the eggs, she comes back outside. There's only two puppies left on the porch. And Wesley and two of the puppies are missing. Okay? So she says that she begins to look for him on her own. She looked around and then she looked inside. She walked around the house and looked. And, you know, she can't find him. Now, it's a gravel driveway up to Highway 63, and it, like I said, it's a little bit of an incline. And a two-year-old, they're not going that far, right? And, and look, I'm not throwing shade on anything, and I'm just going to give you the facts of the cases. I know them and have learned of them over the years. Uh, but I'm going to tell you what happened and what didn't happen. So she, she says she looked for him for a few minutes, and... Then she called the East Feliciana Parish Sheriff's Office to report Wesley missing. Now, at the time, Talmadge Bunch was a sheriff of East Feliciana Parish. He's a good guy. He had been sheriff for a minute, right? And everybody knew him. Uh, the sheriff's office itself is very small, or what still is very small, and, and but it was very small back then also. And when she would have called him in to report the child missing, the whole community pops in in action, all right? Now, Clinton has volunteer firemen. Um, The sheriff's office, a deputy would have responded, and they would have called in and said, hey, we got a missing kid. Then the sheriff's going to get notified. The chief deputy at the time was Paul Perkins. They get notified, and, well, they believe, hey, mama's telling us, this baby's missing. It's a wooded area. Time is of the essence. We got to find him, right? We got to pull out all the stops and find him because you, you know, he gets in the woods there and there's a creek nearby and a pond and all this, but it's woods, y'all. And I mean, I used, I grew up hunting off of the same road and not far from there. So they call out everybody, right? I mean, and Everett being Clint, being a, a tight knit community. Um, the word would have spread like wildfire. And I actually remember this. I wasn't working in uniform patrol at the time for the Livingston Parish Sheriff's Office. And I remember when this made the news. Um, I knew it uh, It stuck in my mind, not only because it's they were from East Philly Santa Parish, but because I knew exactly where this house was. I've driven past it a thousand times over the years. So everybody shows up, okay? The deputies show up. Um, dozens of firefighters show up, um, a bunch of volunteers show up, and they start searching the wooded area around Wesley's house, right, or Ruby's house, Ruby Havard's house. And they, you know, I mean, they're looking in the woods, they're doing everything they can. Um, one of the things that happened during that initial search was, remember I told you there were four puppies on the porch, two were missing along with Wesleydale, and one of the puppies was found on the opposite side of Highway 63 or Bluff Creek Road. Now, that's up the hill, up the gravel driveway, and it's a two-lane um, blacktop state highway, although it's very rural, and I told you there's not a lot of traffic, Okay. And this comes into play later on, and I'll, I'll explain to you um, about that. But the the puppy was found, you know, some distance from the home, and but the immediately the deputies were like, "There, there's no way a two year old made it this far." All right, it's just that didn't they didn't believe it happened. Um, so everybody is in the woods. Look, they came out at, on. Four-wheelers, uh, 
uh, volunteers came out on horses to search the woods. They brought in bloodhounds from DCI and everywhere else, Dixon Correctional Institute and everywhere else, chase teams to help try to track Wesley. Um, they even brought in a helicopter, a Louisiana National Guard helicopter. As a matter of fact, the governor of the state of Louisiana at the time declared East Louisiana Parish a state of emergency so he could get the assistance of the Louisiana um, National Guard's helicopter to come in with infrared, and I'll get that to, to that in a minute. So they're out there, they're looking, and the, initially everybody thinks, you know, Wesley must have fallen into the water, you know, like the, the small pond near the home or the creek or whatever. They, they, were, they were searching everything, and I remember one of them telling me they even were looking into old abandoned wells. And t- but like the pond that, that, that was closest to the house, the firefighters got a portable pump and they drained the pond, you know, thinking that maybe Wesley had fallen into the water, but he wasn't there. The pond was empty. Uh, the nearby creek that they, you know, searched it thoroughly and up and down the creek looking for him. Maybe he fell in. And when I say creek, y'all, the most of those creeks around there, is, of course, it, we commonly refer to it as Bluff Creek, but most of the creeks around there have pretty steep embankments. I mean, we're not talking about drainage ditches. We're talking about five or six foot drop offs. But they're looking and they're looking and you can't find him, right? So um, Sheriff Bunch is on the scene and there was another pond that was located across the street or across the highway in. Uh, Sheriff Talmadge Bunch had divers go into the pond to look there, but Wesley Dale Morgan wasn't there, and he wasn't in the creek, and they couldn't find him in the woods, right? And now this is all on Tuesday, and this is rolling on, it's going on, and it's a you know active deal. So they leave a deputy there that night, you know to basically guard the home where Ruby Havers stand. Now, Wesley's uh, biological father was, was separate, uh, separated from Ruby, and he, he did live in the parish. But, you know, they talked to him. He actually came out and helped search and everything else. Uh, on Wednesday, the sheriff's office requested the assistance of the FBI, right? And even though they didn't have any evidence that Wesley had been abducted or murdered or anything else, but they couldn't eliminate the possibility. And while all these massive searches are going on and everybody's frantic and up in arms, and um, what do you do? I'd have done the same thing. You call the FBI because this is their specialty. So... FBI agents come out and they spend several hours searching uh, Wesley's home, and, you know, where he lived with Ruby and his mother, his mother and her boyfriend, who at the time was 37 years old, and his name was Bern- Burnell Hilton. Okay, so they search the home. They're looking for any sign of blood or sign of, of a crime scene or anything like that, and they don't find anything. They even searched Burnell Hilton's pickup truck, right? They didn't find anything. Um, on Wednesday afternoon, the detectives were like, hmm, we pretty much tore all this up, so we got to start looking at this as a possible criminal investigation. And what they did was they interviewed Wesley Dale Morgan's father, Dewey Morgan, um, but they didn't learn anything, and, and that's what they told the reporters. They they didn't learn anything from Dewey Morgan that helped them find Wesley. And Dewey had, like I told you, Dewey had volunteered in the search for his missing son, and he admitted that he feared the little boy had been kidnapped, and he didn't think the toddler would have strayed far from his front yard, and he was concerned by the fact that he hadn't yet been located. Well as anyone else would have been. 
And I told you the governor had declared the state of emergency, so the Louisiana National Guard brought in a heli- helicopter with thermal imaging equipment, and they searched the area, and uh, especially on Wednesday night. Now, the thermal imaging, y'all, if you don't know it, it's a it's a heat-seeking camera, and anything that's alive or that's warm uh, will show up as bright white. So even if you're hiding underneath brush or you're buried underneath brush or whatever, they would have been able to see that on the camera. And they flew. Now, you imagine this wooded area, all these people out there stomping the woods and, and doing everything, and now you got the helicopter flying low overhead with the camera looking for heat signatures from West of Del Morgan, and they, they don't find it, okay? So... Thursday morning comes, and investigators, the FBI, uh, had called in cadaver dogs. Uh, now, cadaver dogs, you heard me talk about it in um, Screwdriver Red. The cadaver dogs, y'all, are trained to smell a scent of decomposing flesh. As soon as the human body dies, it, it gives off a certain Odor. I'm not talking about decomposition, although it, that's basically what it is. I'm not talking about like a stink. I'm not talking about, you know, where it has maggots on and stuff like that. As soon as you die, your body starts to give off a certain scent that human beings can't even smell. Cadaver dogs, or like a screwdriver red on Caitlin Adele's case, the cadaver dog actually hit on the dryer and the washing machine when we searched um, Kaylee and Eddie Dale's house and he hit on it because that's where the blankets from the bed were which we believe that's where he strangled uh, Kaylin. but as soon as she started to die that scent was left and the cadaver dogs picked up on it Spark something uncommon this holiday with just the right gift from Uncommon Goods The busy holiday season is here and Uncommon Goods makes it less stressful with incredible hand-picked gifts for everyone on your list all in one spot Gifts to spark joy, wonder, delight, and that's exactly what I want it feeling. Hey, y'all, I ordered a super cool piece. It's a candle with a sculpture of an LSU Tiger Stadium on top of it. And each officially licensed laser-cut wooden replica features up to four layers of detail, creating a bird's-eye view of a specific football field, seating section, and more. And every label includes your stadium's name, the team's logo, and school location. And it has a coconut soy vegan wax infused with sandalwood smell that creates tailgates and touchdowns scent profile, reminiscent of game day. It's invigorating like fresh-cut grass and nostalgic like smoke from a pre-game grill. And calming like the crisp autumn air of a new semester on campus. Y'all, I love it. I have it at the base of my TV, and I'm ready to watch the Tigers play on Saturday night, right? Uncommon Goods. Look, when you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. And many of their handcrafted products are made in small batches. So shop now before they sell out this holiday season. Uncommon Goods looks for products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade or made in the U.S., They have the most meaningful, out-of-the-ordinary gifts anywhere. They even have gifts you can personalize. From holiday hosts and hostess gifts to the coolest finds for kids, to hits for everyone from the book lovers to diehard sports fans, Uncommon Goods has something for everyone, not the same old selection you can just find anywhere. And with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, they give $1 to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They've donated more than $3 million to date. So to get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash R-L-R-C. That's uncommongoods.com slash R-L-R-C for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limit time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. Hey, y'all, let me tell you about Gobble. All Gobble Meal Kits are pre-prepped. That means less work for you and less waste in your kitchen. Their meal kits include everything you need so you can save time at the store or just skip that trip entirely. I got the box in and I had three different meals. I had a Kung Pao chicken, crispy fish tacos, and a beef boom jignon. However you say it, but let me tell you about the classic beef boom jignon. Look, it came 
with beef pot roast and a beef broth concentrate, red wine demi glaze, cremini mushrooms, ciapelloni onions, mashed potatoes, baby carrots, and rosemary thyme butter. It was so easy to make. Literally like 15 minutes it took Cindy. And let me tell you something. And all the dishes were fire. But this thing was like a taste explosion in my mouth. It's just un real. We've got to spend more time together and more time doing the things we love because everything came in this one single box right to my door. So see what a difference Gobble will make for your household. Right now, they're all for my listeners, a fantastic limited time deal. You get $120 off across four boxes plus free shipping and free cookies. And let me tell you, those cookies, I ate one that was sin-baked and it was delicious. Go to gobble.com slash real life. That's G-O-B-B-L-E dot com forward slash real life for $120 off your first four boxes. This offer is not available on the home site, so don't miss out. This is genius. It's taste explosions in your mouth like you never had. Well, guess what? Cadaver dogs went everywhere. They, they searched the area. They searched the home. They even searched different parts of East Feliciana Parish, but they weren't able to find any scent of decomposition or any signs of Wesley Dale Morgan. So two days after Wesley was last seen, Chief Deputy Sheriff Paul Perkins um, admitted that They believe Wesley had either been kidnapped or murdered. And what started as a missing persons case now had turned into a criminal investigation. The FBI agents focused their attention on the adults closest to Wesley, and rightfully so. You always start out with the family members, those who saw him last, uh, and things like that. And so... They now are are beginning to look at Ruby Havert and Bernal Hilton. And even Bernal had a 17-year-old son at the time. Uh, um, They bring him in. They start to question him. And they ask him to take polygraphs. Now, I was not the polygraphist in this case yet. That will come later on. Um, But, you know, you would bring him in and you have to get him passed. You can't force anybody to take a polygraph test. They would have separated them and questioned them, and then, of course, they would have denied any involvement, and they would have been like, "Mm, okay, well, then you don't mind taking a polygraph. And they did. So it came back that Bernal Hilton and Ruby Havert both showed deception indicated on the polygraph, all right? And now I know people say, oh, polygraphs aren't reliable and all that. Well, that's... You know, you're only as good as the examiner. And the fact that they both showed deception indicated me as an investigator, I certainly would be looking at them harder, right? But the, after their questioning and the polygraphs and all that, the, um, you know, they, they came out and they said, they've been treating us like murderers. They're looking at the wrong people. But... Like they said, they're just doing their job. That's what they would have told them. Hey, we got to eliminate you, take the polygraph, et cetera. And they failed, according to the polygraph examiner. And matter of fact, they said Hilton failed it miserably. So now we're rolling into Friday, okay? Well, during the case, they came to find out that uh, Ruby Havert had gotten into it with, at some point, with Bernal Hilton's um, ex-girlfriend, and it was disclosed that Bernal Hilton was the focus of an investigation of a shooting that happened in Zachary, Louisiana, uh, during an argument two years earlier in October 1988. And guess what? Now that they're digging into things and this comes to light, Bernal Hilton gets arrested. And he's charged with uh, attempted second-degree murder. So do they stop there? No. They widen the search for Wesley over the weekend. And, yeah, a huge portion of East East Feliciana Parish, which, y'all, it's mostly rural. I mean, 
except for the small town of Clinton and a small town like Norwood and Wilson. When I say small, I mean no stoplights. Jackson, whatever. The Those are the main parts of East Feliciana Parish. And people searched everywhere. They searched, on, again, I told you, they searched on foot. They searched on horseback, ATVs. Uh, volunteers drove all the back roads in the parish, checking culverts and driveways and anywhere they could for any clues to where Wesley was. Uh, Bluff Creek's assistant fire chief, a member of all this volunteer fire department, Daryl Bueller admitted that people were starting to get discouraged. Now it's been Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it's into the weekend, Saturday, five days. He said, and I quote, he said, now we're looking for a kid down on the ground, unconscious or something else. Right now, we're frustrated. Everybody's tired and emotionally drained. You know, rightfully so. And then as this case built up, the news coverage was continuous. Um, and the weekend came and more people wanted to help. So hundreds of volunteers came out and, and they searched for Wesley. And then you had other residents from East Louisiana Parish who donated food and coffee for the search teams. And, and everybody came out to help. Everybody wanted to help in some way. Um, the, the whole community, the, uh, the residents of East Louisiana Parish are stunned, right? I mean, they, that Wesley Dale Morgan is missing. And everybody wanted to help to try to bring him home. Now, Sheriff Talmadge Bunch believed that the people who were closest to Wesley knew more about his disappearance than they were admitting. And he says, as deep in my heart as I can believe, that baby never left that house walking. He was carried out of there. Now, Sheriff Bunch was certain that Ruby and Burnell had done something to Wesley Del Morgan. He said, again, he said, both of them fail their polygraphs. They know something about it, this. And he's talking about Burnell's. He said his was off the charts, okay? So, again, Ruby's 19 years old. She had Wesley when she was approximately 17 years old, and who knows, right? So, although uh, Talmadge Bunch, the sheriff, believed that Ruby and Burnell were responsible for Wesley's disappearance, he didn't necessarily believe that they killed him. He noted that the National Guard was confident that Wesley's body was not in the area. He said, they told me they would have picked him up with their equipment, even if he was buried two feet underground. And Sheriff Bunch thought it was more likely that Ruby had decided to sell or arrange for the illegal adoption of her son. He said, I'm praying and hoping that we can get this baby back alive. So Sheriff Bunch goes on the news and the media, and he appeals to the public for help and determine what had happened to Wesley. He said, we've gotten to the point that Ruby won't talk to us, but somewhere down the line, she's got to put her trust in somebody, and that person could help us. So time marches on. Now, a week's gone by. Two weeks have gone by. Three weeks go by. And three weeks after Wesley was reported missing, the East Feliciana Parish Sheriff's Office conducted another search for him, and they even consulted with a psychic who believed that Wesley had been buried near a creek in Clinton. Okay, y'all, there's a shit ton of creeks there, up there, okay? Um and they brought out cadaver dogs again and searched the area that had been pinpointed by the psychic, but they didn't find anything. And Sheriff Talmadge admitted that it, it had been a long shot, but he was desperate to find the missing Tyler. And he said, I may be crazy, but at this point, I'll try anything. Now, look, I, my hats are off to him for doing that and all these people who helped, all right? Um, now, remember, Burnell's in jail now for attempted second-degree murder, and it's only been a couple weeks. And Ruby, Havert, apparently decided it was time to get another boyfriend, 
okay? And she started dating a man who lived in East Baton Rouge Parish, y'all, which is the parish that butts up to East Feliciana. And East Feliciana is about 40 minutes north of Baton Rouge and butts up to the Mississippi line, all right? Uh, so they, the cops start to focus on this dude because somebody reported that a, a young toddler had been seen uh, at his house. And they searched his home, and he, he wasn't able to provide them with anything useful or any useful information about the case. Uh, and investigators found nothing to indicate, indicate that Wesley had ever been at his home. All right. So now Wesley's missing a month. Less than three weeks later, Ruby's got her a new boyfriend. Um, and unfortunately, the news pretty much quit covering it at that time. And in he's missing for his month and his c- case just faded from the headlines. And the law enforcement continued searching for Wesley, and but they didn't believe Ruby was telling them the truth about what happened, but they couldn't prove it, right? And the case stalled and, and went cold. Now, in December 2015, and I'll, I'll come back to my part in a minute, uh, they had a retired Baton Rouge police officer. His name is Richard Sobers, and I've, I've talked to him, y'all, and he... He spent his own time and his own money trying to figure out what happened to Wesley Dale Morgan. He printed out flyers uh, that said, where's Wesley, and bumper stickers. And he said that the family, uh, this is many, many years later, 14 years later, he said the family never even seemed interested in finding Wesley Dale. And he said, I don't understand why people are not looking for him. Now, to be fair and honest, Richard Sobers had run against uh, a sheriff Talmadge Bunch, you know, I think a couple times and lost to be sheriff. Uh, but he was a 30-year law enforcement veteran. I think his heart was in the right place. People have called him crazy and everything else. I just think he had a passion for uh, trying to find Wesley L. Morgan. But Sheriff Bunch still believed that Ruby had been directly involved in her son's disappearance and had most likely sold Wesleydale. And he said, I know he's alive somewhere. Now, let's go back to 2001 and move forward to 2008. Uh, 2008, Ruby is pregnant again. And what happens? Well, she's living in Jackson, Louisiana, and she gets arrested. And she's arrested and charged with attempting to sell her unborn child to a married couple for $2,000. But the sale didn't go through, y'all, and eventually the the charges were dropped. And and, uh, Rhonda Covington, who was the public defender, had been appointed to represent Ruby at this point. I think she might still represent her to this day. But she... You know, she said that uh, when Ruby was charged in 2008, and she, did, she still denied that she knew what happened to Wesley, and that she claimed that Ruby was still hopeful that she would one day be reunited with her missing son. But, and this has been a common thing throughout the thing, y'all, detectives said that Ruby hadn't checked on the status of Wesley Dale since shortly after he was reported missing. And Ruby and the rest of her family were not supported of supportive of Richard Sobers, the, the retired Baton Rouge City Police Officer I told you about, in his efforts to help find Wesley. Right? Um, in 2016, the FBI announced they were reopening an investigation of Wesley's disappearance. And they put up more than 20 billboards with information about the case and they were placed throughout Louisiana and Mississippi. And the billboards included an age progression photograph of what Wesley might look like as a teenager. Y'all, I'm going to put all this on social media. They've done some more of that since then. Um, And I want you to share it everywhere because I'll tell you my thoughts in a minute. But the investigators hoped that the billboards would bring in some new tips and help them finally determine 
what had happened to Wesley. Uh, the FBI also announced they were offering a $10,000 reward for information leading to Wesley's recovery. So, y'all, let me go back for a minute and, uh, the, um, and tell you my part. All right, so I met the Louisiana State Police as a criminal investigator, and I was doing polygraphs. And um, I was in my office one day, and my partner, who had my outer office, was Murray Landry. Now, Murray Landry had retired as a trooper, um, and he was probably in his 60s at the time. He, he came back. They hired him back as a criminal investigator, very sharp very good investigator and he had a long and storied career with the Louisiana State Police and they bring him back and basically we were partners but he came in the office he said hey man he said the FBI wants you to look at this case of Wesley Dale Morgan and I said you know what dude I said I've been following that forever it happened like in my shit right where I'm from and he said, you want to take a ride over to, to their office and that they want you to, you know, try to polygraph R- Ruby, the mama again and what have you. And I said, well, I got to look at the case file. And he said, well, let's go. So we went to the, to the FBI office. They brought us in a conference room and the, an agent gave me the case file. And I said, I, got, I need to read through it. I need to get my head on all the different things and figure out what kind of questions I can ask her that won't be emotion evoking questions to her to give her a fair shot. I would love to clear it. Right. And, and so they could focus on something else. Well, I start digging into the file and, and Murray's good friends with agent and has been for years. And they'd gone in another room drinking coffee, or whatever. And shit, I'm, I'm digging through this file and I'm like, holy fuck, it, it's huge. Right. But one thing that on working these cold cases that I've been blessed with is, is uh, being able to play armchair quarterback, basically. And I'm digging through this file, and one of the things I find is a statement that somebody had called in from northern Mississippi saying that one of the families at their church had just magically showed up with a young boy, a toddler, at church on a Sunday. And they gave some excuse, like it was a relative's kid or something like that. And it had never been followed up on, y'all. But and, and so when the agent came back in the room, they wanted me to go to lunch. And, and I was like, no, I'm, I'm eating right now. I'm eating this case file. Y'all go ahead and do lunch. And, and I, but I asked them, but by the time they got back from lunch, I had looked at that statement and, and, and numerous other ones. And I'm like, holy shit. And the, the possibility that Wesley could have been sold or let's go out on a limb and say maybe kidnapped. The, um, the, but y'all, I, I never bought the kidnapping idea because of that driveway and if you're on that little bitty porch um somebody would have had to turn into the driveway and you're in the kitchen in that little bitty house someone would have to turn on the gravel driveway you could have heard them driving up the driveway you you know I mean, there's puppies i assume there were uh, if you got puppies and you got big dogs that would have been barking and i just i didn't buy it right i didn't buy that some stranger just happened to be coming down Bluff Creek Highway or Highway 63, and you can't even really see the porch. You wouldn't even be able to see that Wesley was on the You could see it, but you wouldn't have been able to see a toddler playing with four puppies, right? So I didn't really buy that that angle, but I was open to it. Um, I r- never believed that Wesley Dale Morgan was dead in those woods. I believe the people would have found him. I believe the helicopters would have found him. I certainly believe the cadaver dogs would have found him. That dog literally didn't hunt for me. I had excluded that and moved on to the the potential kidnapping or uh, Wesley being sold or whatever, right? So now I'm having this stuff and I'm reading. They get back from lunch. I'm like, holy shit, y'all. And, and you know, I'm, I'm, the agent was like, when I start to tell him about it, he was like, no, no, no. He said, he said it, it, it's, it's probably a kidnapping. And he said, you know, that house is, is right by a major intersection on, on a major highway. And I said, no, it's not. And he said, what do you mean? I said, dude, that house is in the middle of fucking nowhere. And, and that house really can't even be seen. If, if you're coming from Clinton, driving towards Bluff Creek, you wouldn't even know it was down there on the left-hand side. If you were coming from Bluff Creek, driving towards Clinton, you might 
catch a glimpse of it because it was that diagonally down that little short gravel driveway. I said, there is, there's no intersection near here. It's not like somebody pulled up at a stop sign and could see the house and see Wesley Dale there and snatch him up, which would have been a situational offender, y'all. The profile would have showed. I said, there's no way. And, and I said, the, you know, I pointed out to the thing in Mississippi, and he was like, oh, shit, well, you know, so like, they got excited, right? And he was like, can you polygraph her? And I said, yeah, well, I mean, they got to find her and, and get, I got to get her permission. And guess what? She wasn't hard to find. Um, she was locked up in the Bulls Parish prison. And I, y'all don't remember what the charge were. Uh, so, but I, I get a hold of it. And now at the time, uh, Sheriff Talmadge Bunch was running against, I think, uh, Richard Sobers, who I told you about from that retired from Baton Rouge City, and another guy named Joel Odom, who is career law enforcement. And to this day, I think he's over investigations for the Department of Corrections, but he was a friend of mine. And that he had let it be known that if he won, he was going to hire me as his chief deputy. Now, I had told Louisiana State Police when it started being civil service, I can't get involved in elections, anything like that. And I didn't. And, and I made a point not to campaign for him or anything like that. But guess what? The powers that be were pissed off that his my name was associated with his, that he's saying it. And they, they filed like 13 different complaints with Internal Affairs, which I had gone in and told him. I said, you're going to get complaints, but they're not true. And he filed like thir- they filed like 13 complaints saying that I had um, – been campaigning for him and shit like that, and it wasn't true. And and so I was exonerated on all of them. But it's not going to stop me from working this case. But now I'm thinking about it, and I read the file and everything, and I'm like, you know what? I need to go talk to the district attorney. There is no way that Ruby Haver, I think it was Freeman was her last name by this time, but I'm not sure, that there's no way she is going to just give it up. I'm good, but I'm not that fucking good. Right, she's not going to give it up after all these years. And now, remember, she got arrested in 2008 for allegedly trying to sell her unborn baby. And Rhonda Covington, her attorney, basically got it thrown out, saying that, oh well, you know, even though it wasn't legal adoption, they were just giving her money for her health care expenses and stuff like that, and they were going to get the baby. And in the end, um, they didn't. Right, so. But I'm coming after the fact. So I go to Sam DeQuilla. Now, Sam DeQuilla is the district attorney for East and West Louisiana Parish. That's a job my grandfather had uh, probably 20 years before him. I had known Sam forever, uh, uh, for a long, long time. I don't know, 20 years, something like that. And the I knew him when he was a young attorney, before he was district attorney. So I go to Sam's office. I get a meeting with him, and I sit down. And I said, look. I'm looking into Ruby's case, Wesley Dale Morgan. And he's like, man, he said, we've, we've questioned her and questioned her and offered her things, and she won't budge. I said, well, you know what? I got a little more information now. I'm, I want, you know, a shot at her. They wanted me to, to you know, to polygraph her. And I said, but, but I need something from you. He said, what do you need? I said, I need some kind of assurance that I can give her that if she gives me the juice on where Wesley Dale Morgan is, that you know, you'll give her some kind of plea bargain or something. He said, shit, Woody. He said, if she will tell you where he is, I, I'll write out a statement right now saying that if she will tell you where he is, as long as he's alive. And, and he hadn't been sold in the, to sex trafficking or something like that, that and we prove that he's alive and safe, I will not charge her with anything. We just need to find out where Wesley Dale Morgan is. I'm like, cool. So I got that, and I drive to a Bulls Parish, and you know, I tell them why I'm there, and they they buzz me back into an interview room, and they bring Ruby out. Now, I don't remember exactly what year this was, y'all. Maybe 2009 or 10, something like that. The uh, maybe 11, but it was during my the years as a uh, criminal investigator with Louisiana State Police. So I'm in the room by myself, and she comes in, and she's handcuffed and shackled, and she's in her jumpsuit, 
and she sits down and she says, who are you? I said, I'm Woody Overton and I'm a criminal investigator with Louisiana State Police, but I'm also a polygraphist. And she said, I ain't saying shit, literally. And I said, okay. I said, you don't have to say shit. I said, but listen to me before I leave. As a matter of fact, I don't want you to say anything. I said, Ruby, I believe Wesley Dale, your son, was probably initially in northern Mississippi from some people that you knew or met through whomever, and you gave him or you sold him or whatever. I said, it doesn't matter. I said, I have promise of no prosecution to, against you. Um, they won't do anything. I have it in writing that you won't be prosecuted as long as we find him alive and that you didn't kill him. And she just sat there and looked at me. I said, now, the flip side of the coin is, if you didn't have anything to do with it, and even though they said you failed a polygraph all those years ago, I said, I'm on your side. You know, and I said, I may be wrong about it being in the Mississippi, but you let me polygraph you, and I'm not saying, throwing any shade on the examiner that you took the polygraph with before that said you failed. I said, but you, I'm telling you, I'm fucking good at what I do. And if you didn't have anything to do with your son's disappearance, take the test. I said, if you did, don't take the test because you're not going to pass with me. She said, I ain't taking shit and I got nothing else to say. That's it. She left, right? So I get back, um, state police, and by this time, the powers would be the same ones who called in complaints against me saying I was uh, – campaigning for Joel Odom and all that. They had they had called the colonel and were raising hell and I got pulled off of it. No big deal, right? I, I guess they thought I was trying to do something to throw a shade on them and I wasn't. I, mean, I, I, I haven't, don't have anything against those guys not even to this day. I think they were small department, super small. I know they're super small department and they were doing the best that they could do, right? Um, so Back to it, all right? And so Ruby continues to maintain that Wesley wandered away from the home while she was inside cooking eggs, and investigators don't believe it. And they said if Wesley did wander away, it's possible he was abducted by a stranger and he might have, or he might have succumbed to the elements. But searchers combed through a five-mile area surrounding Wesley's house and found no sign of the to- toddler. And if he did walk away, he did so without leaving any footprints behind. All right. Um, y'all, I'm going to read you a little bit more. And this this part's kind of controversial, but this was made known to me. And it's, 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 in fact, it's documented. I mean, the supposedly, and I'll read it to you, and it's from the Morning Advocate, the news. Um, supposedly, the night that West Adele went missing, that. Um, Ruby Renee Haver. Let me just read it to you. This this is gonna piss you off, but the it's not been proven. I mean, I'm just reading you what I found. But I had always heard about this, but I've actually found something to back it up. And it says, um, topics, index terms, law enforcement, misconduct, child's missing family, allegation leads to an investigation. It says, East Feliciana deputy denies having sex with mom and Miss and Tyler. And the author of this, y'all, is James Minton. Um, it says, the East Feliciana Parish Sheriff's Office is investigating allegations that a sheriff's deputy had sexual relations with the mother of a missing toddler while the officer was assigned to keep tabs on the woman. Uh, Chief Sheriff's Deputy Paul Perkins said the deputy, I'm, I'm not going to say the name, uh, when questioned about the allegation Monday, denied having sex with Ruby and Renee Haver, 19, formerly of Bluff Creek. Um, he said, right now, it's just her word against his, Perkins said. He added, he and Sheriff Talmadge Bunch regret the reported incident. is detracting from the primary focus of the investigation, which is finding the missing boy. Now, y'all remember, this is immediately after West of went missing. Um, Blank said... He has been an East Feliciana Parish Sheriff's Deputy for nearly three years. 
without a blemish on his record, and he said he plans to seek advice from a lawyer on what he should do. He said, but I know that I'm innocent. And Blank said, the sheriff's office investigation has been less than discreet, and he is upset. His reputation is damaged at, on the word of someone he was assigned to follow in the course of another investigation. You know, that's I'm talking about Westerdale's disappearance. Perkins said the investigation of the allegations against Blank is incomplete, but Blank, who has already accepted a job offer with East Baton Rouge Parish Sheriff's Office, was placed on admin leave with pay for what was to have been his final day on the job. The investigation also appears to have cost Blank his new job as well. The chief criminal deputy for East Baton Rouge Parish Sheriff's Office, Colonel Mike Barnett, said Bunch informed him of the investigation Tuesday and he said, we withdrew the work offer today when we were made aware of the allegations, Barnett said. Havert, who lived on 63 southeast of Clinton, told sheriff's deputies May 15th that her two-year-old son, Wesley Dow Morgan, disappeared while playing in the yard and she was inside preparing lunch. Despite intense ground, air, and water searches and in-depth investigations by deputies, FBI agents, and state police, no trace of the missing child has been found. Soon after, searchers came up empty-handed in the immediate area of the home that Havert shared with Bernal Hilton, Bernal Hilton Jr. The sheriff's office assigned several officers to follow Havert's every move, particularly after Hilton was arrested in connection with a 1998 shooting in Zachary. Perkins said, Blank followed Havert to a mobile home where her cousin, cousin and and another deputy lived, and Blank followed her inside the trailer where Havert claimed they had sex. All right? So the chief deputy said he and Bunch began looking into talk of a possible liaison between Havert and a deputy several weeks ago and intensified the investigation after questioning another male friend of Havert last week. I do not know why she is doing this, Blank said of Havert. Maybe she was mad at me for following her around. She expressed that to me. I know what her background is, and I would be stupid to have anything to do with her, Blank added. He said he is upset with the sheriff's office handling of the issue and that members of the news media knew he was on administrative leave before he did. He said the only reason he entered the mobile home was because it was another deputy's home. He said, nothing's been proven, but my whole career is ruined, Blank said. Right now, I don't have a job, and I have two kids to feed. And, y'all, this is from 2001, the Capital City Press, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. All right, back to it. Over the years, uh, and, y'all, I'm certainly not saying that he did or didn't do it, but I'm saying Ruby Havert said he did it, right? I mean, this is in the time immediately following West Adele being going, and then, and then less than three weeks later, she has a new boyfriend. So uh, Burnell is locked up on attempted second-degree murder. I think he ended up pleading out to whatever, aggravated battery or something like that. And then later on in the years, I found that he had been arrested for um, more felony charges. But that's neither here nor there. And Wesley's family, what about his dad? His biological dad, you know, his his aunt, one of them that I know, Mary Dufour, um, that that they, these are good people, and they want to know where Wesley is. They want him brought home. They want something done. All right? uh, even after the sixteen years, when they bring in this special team for the FBI. And they're investigating new leads, and they offer the money, and they put up the billboards. And although they they said they had leads, they didn't say just say it. They had leads that they followed up. It's still nothing been, has been defined to this day. Now, I could play you, you know, news articles or interviews and shit like that, but I, I you know, I don't really think that it's it's pertinent. I can tell you that everybody in Clinton, Louisiana, everybody in East Feliciana Parish, Louisiana, still wants to see Wesley Dale Morgan brought home. Um, and that includes me. 
even though I don't live there full time anymore, I still have a place there. My parents are there. Uh, I know all the people who searched. I watched their interviews over the years as this case progressed. Um, it's it's you know got an extensive media coverage over the years, but now it's really gone cold. And Wesley Dale Morgan, whatever name he's going by now, Wesley Dale Morgan would be about 24 years old. And the kicker of it is, y'all, I can assure you, my hope is that he went to a good family, right? That le- legally couldn't adopt for whatever reason, um, that loved him and raised him. And I can assure you, he doesn't know that his name is Wesley Dale Morgan, right? I don't know what story they told him. Maybe they said that you're our son. I don't know. But I, I, I'm, and I, even though I don't have any direct knowledge, I'm telling you, he's not, he, at that time, he wasn't dead. He may have got killed in a car wreck. Anything, any number of things could have happened to him since then. But he's not, or never was, in those woods around Bluff Creek. That's my personal opinion. Um, the fact that she gets arrested, even though the charges were dismissed, in the, um, what, seven years later, for what they said at the time was trying to sell her unborn baby. You do the math, right? I looked her in the eyes, people. She told me to fuck myself. Even though I had offer full immunity. But you know what? If she had something to do with it and I was her, I probably would be like, Go fuck yourself to prove it. And uh, I mean, Rhonda Covington, her lawyer, is a good lawyer. She's a good public defender. And, and you know, she is, uh, whenever the FBI brought in the special team and all that, they she actually gave a statement for Ruby saying that, oh, it's bringing up mixed emotions for my clients. It's bringing up feelings and memories. Um and so, I mean, she wasn't totally happy about it, although Covington said that, you know, she wasn't against it. But let's take it as a parent. You don't call. You don't even have your lawyer call. And, that, you know, Covington, her attorney, and she's, got, she's doing her job, y'all. She, she's like, mm, there's no proof that she tried to sell her baby, and there's no proof that... I mean, the unborn baby. There's no proof uh, that Wesley w- wasn't dead or whatever. But just because you can't find him, you're gonna you're gonna throw shade on my client, saying that she sold him. Well, you know what? That's the defense attorney's job. You look at the facts of the situation. Okay, I'm a parent of four. Two of them that are approximately. Wesley Dale Morgan's age. My baby had gone missing. I'd have been to sheriff's office every fucking day. Right? But that's me. I wouldn't have been accusing a deputy of having sex with me or, you know, that I had sex with a deputy whether he was following me or not. Um... I wouldn't have got a new boyfriend within three weeks, and your other boyfriend just went to jail. Um, I would be on the news every anniversary on May 15th. I would be trying to keep it in the media. I would be raising hell, and so would you. But it takes all kinds to make the world go around, and who knows why Ruby has done what she's done or hasn't done what she's done, I can't say. But we can use this platform, Real Life, Real Crime, the podcast, right? We have so many millions of followers now. We have more listeners than all of the radio stations in the state of Louisiana combined, 
of course, our listeners are all over the United States and all over the world. I think it's time to press this fight. Now, I'm not going to be, although I drove by that house twice this weekend, I'm not going to be out in the bushes looking for remains of, of Wesley. And even though they got some tips that he was buried in such, such place, they went and dug it up. It was dog bones, right? And things over the years. I'm not going to be in those woods because I don't believe he's there. And I'm not going to northern Mississippi or anywhere else because I don't have to because I have lifers. And y'all, we are going to share Wesley Dale Morgan's picture when he, from that time when he was two years old. And then they FBI have had the specialists do age enhancements of what he would look like now uh, or all the way up until he was like 19 anyway. Um, we're going to share it. I want everybody to share it and share it and share it and share it and take a look around. Take a look around at these 24-year-olds. And, hey, if you're a 24-year-old and you're not sure of, you know, that exactly where you come from or maybe you couldn't get your birth certificate straight or something, I don't know. But, the, the, uh, you know, y'all, if you have any information, when you share it, you have any tips, somebody knows Somebody knows exactly what happened. If you don't want, you can call the East Feliciana Sheriff's Office or call the FBI. But if you don't want to call them and you want to call me and you want to remain anonymous and I can pass the tips forward or whatever, maybe I might go out and work it then if I, if I get something to go off of. Um, but my tip line, and it's the same one we used for Miss Barbara Blunt, y'all continue to call on tips on her case also. My tip line is 313 313- Seven five seven two eight four seven. That's three one three R L R C tip. So it's three one three R L R C T I P. Let's bring him home. If we don't bring him home, let's just find out where he is so he can know the true history of his life. He can know the loved ones uh that care about him, right? And it's never gone away. It's never going to go away. Their heart's never going to go away, even though he was just two years old. But he's out there. I believe it. I believe it. And, you know, Ruby can say whatever she wants to about me, or Miss Covington can say whatever she wants. This is my personal opinion. This United States of America, and I can say what I believe. I'm not throwing sh- shade on her. I didn't say that she sold him. I didn't say that he wasn't abducted, whatever. You can add up your own facts. You can listen to what I said today and take it for what you think it's worth. But I'm telling you, I believe he is out there. I believe he was raised by a family. And I'm praying it was a good family. I'm pretty sure it was because if what I believe uh, uh, that is – maybe an illegal adoption or whatever, like she got arrested for in 2008, even though the charges were dismissed, the, the, I believe that somebody wanted a baby to love that couldn't have their own baby. He's a man now. Probably got a family of his own. Maybe he doesn't want to rock the apple cart, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't know. But I'm, we're going to share these photographs. We're going to share everything. And I want y'all to share it. I want you to start looking around. I want you to share it. I want you, we are, we got, I can't go anywhere in the United States of America now without being recognized. Okay. So that's how many listeners we have. If every listener that we have takes a moment and questions, Don't confront anybody, but, I mean, if you think that you know uh, where Wesley Dale is or you have a suspicion of it, let me know. Or call it in at FBI, call it in at East Feliciana Parish Sheriff's Office. I am not affiliated with their investigations anymore, people. I don't have to play by their rules. But Wesley Dale has very distinct features, very distinct eyes. And even though you're grown, these Age progression photographs are phenomenal, and, and they've been proven to work in other cases. 
we can do this together. At least give it a shot. Because what if it was your son, right? Or your grandson or your nephew. And let's just get closure for the people that love him, the people who gave a fuck about him. Doesn't mean we have to bring him home. It, they can go approach him and he'll be like, mm, I don't want anything to do with it. And it'll go away. And that's fine. But at least the, they have to come back and tell the family he's alive and he's well, he's well, he's a grown man, and he's aware of the situation. And the family can get some closure. So, y'all, again, you can't share it too much. You can't talk about it too much. Let's use the power of this platform to bring Wesley Dell Morgan or what happened to Wesley Dell Morgan or where is Wesley Dell Morgan, whatever you want to call it. Let's do it for this family. Okay? And I'm going to conclude today's episode uh, with that. You have the tip line, watch your social media, share it, and let's see, see what happens. I believe in the power of lifers. I'm going to conclude this episode. Um, real Life, Real Crime Daily, y'all, it's dropping four days a week now. This regular show will drop on Tuesdays for now. It's, it's probably going to get swapped to Mondays at some point. But you're getting five days a week of Real Life, Real Crime. One is a, a show that I co-host with Mike Agravino and Jim Chapman. Uh, that's four days a week. And then you get this re original real life real crime. And I'm going to be telling some more stories, but I, need, I needed to tell this one, especially after passing it twice this weekend and thinking about it all these years and then researching, et cetera. But the go check out those shows. Go check out Bloody Angola. It's doing phenomenal. It's growing every day. It's, it's in the charts and everything else. And that's a, um, podcast I do with my co-host Jim Chapman go to the Real Life Real Crime Community app download it for free you'll see the stuff about West, um, Wesley Dale Morgan in there and, and Miss Barbara Blunt's case and there's chat groups forums and games and everything in Real Life Real Crime that's all my other social media pages Instagram TikTok the five or six Facebook pages I have uh, I, Twitter, all that shit is in one place. And if you want to message me, message me there or woody at realliferealcrime.com. Email me. I can promise you I'm getting to read that. But I'm going to the app first and reading everything before I go to the crew page. The crew page has over 40,000 members, our private group, Real Life Real uh, Crime, friends, fans, and crew. And we have so many new listeners since um, – this is what went viral before Courtney Coco's case even went on Dateline. We went to number one in the world, right, because of a TikTok somebody did. So we, the all the new listeners, all you new lifers are out there, the Real Life Real Crime community app is is everything Real Life Real Crime on steroids and it's only censored by me. And it's free. Go download it for free. Uh, I want to thank all our Patreons and our convicts and our Apple subscribers for subscribing. I'm going to be locking up like double the amount of episodes that are in the vault now. I'm working on that as we speak. So I hope you're enjoying your commercial free early releases. Although last week and this week due to different reasons, you're only going to get it like a day ahead of time or, you know, 24 hours ahead of time where in the past some, you get your commercial free early releases, you know, up to five days or sometimes a week at a time. But I love and appreciate each and every one of y'all. Thank you so much for liking and sharing and continuing to help Real Life Real Crime Original grow. And in um, LOPA, Louisiana Organ Procurement Agency, y'all, they save lives every day. And not only do they save lives, this nonprofit organization helps families go through the worst periods of their life when they lose their loved ones, the ones who have actually signed up to be organ donors. They walk them through the process. They help them. They love on them. They give them the counseling, whatever they need. They, they before, during, and after. All right. So it'd be a hero. Um, 
you don't have to be from Louisiana to sign up to be an organ donor. You can be a lifer from Toma, Wisconsin. Go to lopa.org, fill out the two-minute questionnaire, sign up to be an organ donor, give the gift of life, and be a hero. And I'm Woody Overton, your host of Real Life, Real Crime, the podcast. Until next time or ever, don't let me catch you down on Murder by You. Yeah, the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have a right to an attorney prior to or during any question. If you can't afford one, the court will appoint one for you. Do you understand your rights?